Today we're going to be discussing um, skirt steak, um, which really refers to two different things, and that is that on each side of the animal, that is the left and the right side, each side has two different things that we call a skirt steak. Um, and eat, they're, they're very similar, they look very similar, each about three, four inches across, maybe half an inch thick, and like 12 to 24 inches long, it's like long strip of meat. Um, but they're not exactly, they're not really the same pieces at all. So first we're going to talk about what's called the outer skirt, which is part of the tarfish, the diaphragm. And then we're going to talk about the inner skirt, which is a, a similar looking piece of meat, but a little bit different part of the body. Um, okay, so first we're, going to, today, first we're going to start with the outer skirt. Now, what the outer skirt comes from the tarfish, the diaphragm. The diaphragm is, uh, as we've seen in the past, it's a, sh a, a, some, a membrane that separates between the front and the back half of the animal. The front half of the animal, meaning <coughs> <excuse> me, <coughs> the thoracic cavity, where the, the lungs and the heart are. And the back half of the cavity of the animal, where all the digestive type organs um, are. And so this, this it's, a, it's a big, it's a membrane, it's a two-layered two membrane. Um, that that's that's this dividing point and in the center of it is something called the hanging tender that's a thick muscle we're going to talk about that in a few minutes but on the edges around it on each of the sides there's like a bow shaped piece of meat excuse me which we call the the uh, outside skirt um or that's the better of the what they call the skirt sticks okay and so there's this this strip of muscle that's running along each side one on the left side one on the right side um, and those are the two of the outside skirt, the two outside skirts um, that you can get from an animal. So um, the, the and there's there's this, this membrane is on both sides of it. It's like sandwiched in the middle of these muscles. Um, so on the right side of the animal, on the right side of the animal, the liver takes up a lot of the space on the top half of the digestive organs, leaning up against the diaphragm. Um, and below that is the basic cases. Um, and right behind that is the, the hemsis also. And so the hemsis and the basic cases have fat on them, the chay of shala carob on them. Uh, on the other side is the caris that has its own fats. I don't know if those reach all the way up to the diaphragm, but these fats on the right side um, come up very close to the, very come up very close to the, the tarpish, to the diaphragm. And therefore the Ramos says um, that if a person is eating the, the outside skirt, well, you know, of course that's called the outside skirt, um, if a person is eating the, the what he calls the Yaseris the, the this the tarpish, the person is eating that muscle that's over there, they need to be menaker that membrane before they eat it because this chelev from the back half of the animal, from the chelev shalot kerev that's sitting, that runs up right against it. And so when the, the Ramah says it the first time, he talks about being menaker it um, to, to get out the, take the fat off of it. Um, later, when we'll talk about his third opinion, he's going to have three sheetas altogether. But in the third opinion, he talks about removing that, that layer completely. The whole crumb, what he calls a crumb, that whole crumb has to be removed, he says, take off and removed completely. Uh, and that's because of the chaylev that's coming there from the chaylev child care that's rubbing against that. If you remember, we've spoken in the past um, that the Gemara says there, there are five crumb that have to be taken off, um, and three of them have to do with chaylev. Um, and this is not one of them. So this is not a crumb that the Gemara says you have to take off. So it's only being taken off, according to this opinion, it's being taken off um, because of the chaylev that's there that might be leaning up against it. Um, so you have to scrape off the chaylev, or later the Ramos says you have to actually peel off the whole crumb. Now, that's what the Ramos says, that's his first, sheet that, his first sheet that he speaks about. But he has two other ways of looking at this as well. And the second one comes from a uh, sheet of the Ereum, um, Rebelezmi Mitz, which is brought in Tezus, um, who says that... Um, the the Yeseris HaKaved is one of the things that are brought on the Mizbech, one of the Chalom that have to be brought from Shlom that have to be brought on the Mizbech. Um, so the Yeseris HaKaved is brought, and the and it, and it goes with the Chalom that's part of the Yeseris HaKaved. It has to go on to it also. He says, and therefore, um, this Chalom is Asr. Because remember, we said that the, the reason why um, the, the only the Chalom that's Asr for a person to eat, the Torah said, don't eat the chilev that you bring on the Mizbech. He said, well, this chilev, this, so that, then the Torah lists off, and then, and when bringing the Mizbech, the Torah lists off a number of different chalavim, and then it says, the Yisaris of Kavit also. So if the Yisaris of Kavit gets brought, which we now understanding to mean is the the outside skirt is, is brought, the whole the whole diaphragm is brought on the Mizbech, well, that includes the fat that's with it, so then all the fat that's on that meat also. Forget about the chrome, because it may have some chilev from the back of the animal, um, the, the fat that's on that part itself has to be brought 
uh, has to be is usher because it's born in Mizbech. Now, so it's not listed as a chalev, but it's listed it's born in Mizbech anyhow. Uh, others, so then he says, he says, you know, but others argue and they say to me, nah, it's not usher because even though it's even though it's born in Mizbech, but it's not brought as chalev on Mizbech. It's not brought. It's brought as a sort of an adjunct or like sort of accessory to, to the rest of the of the meat that's there. It's not brought as chalev. The other ones it says the chalev shal the chalev shal kerev and chalev hamachas is a kerev. It doesn't say the chale of the Aserus, just as the Aserus are covered. Um, so, but, but and the, uh, the argument back to that is, um, is potentially that <coughs> we're only, we, everything that's brought in the Mizbeach is Aser, um, okay, everything that's brought in the, I'm sorry, we have a special miut to say that a chale of Adafanas, we had mentioned that a miut to say that chale of Adafanas is, is mutter, which is, that tells us that really all chale should be Aser, unless it's and since this is unless right, this is brought on this bear, it should be usher also. So that's what Blizzard Mimits holds that the fat that's on that meat is also usher. Not the meat, because the Torah only says don't eat chalev, but anything that, that potentially is, is fatty um, could be usher. So the, he holds that you don't just have to remove the crumb because of the fat that might be on it from the back of the animal, but the fat that's between the crumb and the meat, the fat that the, any fat that's in there has to be removed also. Now, the, the, this whole this whole sheet is built on what he, he mentions. He, he says, my sheet is built on my assumption, which is what um, he says, what well, Amasari is, that the Asaras of means the diaphragm. That's what it means. And therefore, the fat that's in between the layers of this crumb have to be taken out also. He, but but the truth is that he, that there are other Rishonim, the Ramam and the Aruch, who say that the Asaras of means something else. It means the caudal lobe of the, of the liver. So it's a little piece that hangs off the liver that looks literally... That, that, we would call the etzba hakavi, and he says that's what the, what the Torah means when it says the yeseris hakavi. The etzba hakavi is a mishnayis word. The, he says that's what the Torah means when it means the yeseris hakavi, the, like the extra from the kavi. Um, so when we say yeseris hakavi means the the diaphragm, because that's what the kavi lays on it. It sits right on top of it, um, the tarpish. So, but according to those rishonim, of course, there's no question that the that the fat in the in the uh, tarpish. The fat by the outside skirt doesn't have to be taken off. But Rebbe it says, which is what we do, which is that we assume that Yisrael's recovery means the diaphragm. So Rebbe it says, therefore, that fat has to be taken off also. Most Rishonim disagree with him. Most Rishonim um, don't hold like, like this shita. Um, and just, just before we go on to what the Ramah says, I'll just mention the Beis Yosef in, in Simen South Dalad, that's our Simen, uh, when he's talking about this, he talks all about the, the sheet of Rebbe Zimimitz, at the end, he mentioned he he his his implication is that he thinks he should be mekel that, but at the end he mentions that the women are make are and the meaning is that they will not eat the whole they don't eat the whole piece of meat the bachal the whole thing the whole um, outside skirts they won't eat because of the concern of this chayl of the coin to bless me and then at the end of the siman samach hey um, the the Yosef is bringing a number of he's talking about someone else who spoke about nikkur and he says you know that person left a whole a, bunch, a number of things and he should have mentioned them because. Um, those things you should be machmer on because it's a suffolk derisa. It might be really chayyab, which is awesome with derisa. You should have mentioned it. So one of those, and one of those he mentions is Rebbe Lezer Mimitz. That also is giving an impression that he thinks that maybe this, you should be machmer for the sheet of Rebbe Lezer uh, that the fat between the crumb and the outside skirt should be aser. Uh, but in the, in the Shulchan Aruch himself, he doesn't bring it. So here he was talking about someone else. That person should have mentioned the sheet. He himself doesn't mention it at all. Which is very much that he holds that it's completely mutter, but he's not being close to the sheet at all. Anyhow, but that's a, that, that's within a question what the what the machaber holds. But the Ramah brings it as a second sheet, <clears throat> as a second sheet to say um, that maybe you should be machmir for the sheet of Rebbe Lezer to say um, that you cannot eat the fat that's on top of the outside skirt. Now, but, uh, be, before we, uh, the, in order to understand the second sheet, it's a little bit something a little strange about the way the Ramah says it because if we read the Ramah. The Ramah says, first he says the first sheet. Here is a kavit. Yes, matzirich u'makar ha'krum ha'elyon shatzad kavit. Some people say you have to take off the, the outside, the, the top layer. Mishum chelah ha'kerev from shemun ha'chelav. Because the chelah ha'kerev is sitting on it, like I mentioned, that's the first sheet that there's chelah from the back of the animal, and therefore you have to you have to do be menakar that krum uh, in order to make sure there's no chelah on it. That's the first sheet. Then he says, what seems like the second sheet is. Some people say you have to go with the shuman because they're holding like Rabbalism emits that that's considered um chil. That's also also. But the the fat that's on the inside, remember the, the 
the outside skirt is an this diaphragm is the separation between the front and the back half of the animal. So the front half of that of that skirt points the front half of that skirt points towards the lip the lungs. It also has a crumb and it also has fat between the the, the muscle and the meat and the crumb. So, he says, so the Ramah says you don't have to take off the fat on that side. Now, according to Rebbe Lezim Mimitz, that doesn't that, 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 some, that doesn't fit over here because according to Rebbe Lezim Mimitz, all fat that's on that uh, on the diaphragm is brought on the mizbech. The whole thing is brought on the mizbech. You don't bring one side on the mizbech and not the other side. The whole thing is brought on the mizbech, so it should all be usher. So why would this middle sheet to say Yesh um, Machmir to take off the krum, <coughs> the fat that's on the on the liver side of the of the skirt, not on the lung side of the skirt. What should be the difference between them? So, I don't really, I'm not sure what the answer to that really is. Um, one possibility is that maybe we're reading this wrong. Not to read this the simple way. Maybe those V'yesh Machmirim is a parenthetical comment. Okay? And here's, here's, an, here's a way to read the Ramah differently. It says, Yeser is a covet. <coughs> the Ramah says, Some people say you should take up the Kurm Elyon because Chil HaKer Shemunach love. And then skip the middle word. Then and he continues. There's no reason to take off the crumb on the on the long side of it because the crumb on the long side of it doesn't touch any chaylev. It's nowhere near any chaylev. So there's no reason to take that side off. Only take off the crumb on the liver side of it because that touches chaylev hakarev. But there's no reason to take off the the crumb on the long side of it. In which and and then there's a middle. There's a parenthetical comment in the middle of the which says, But some people say you should take off the the chel, the shuman, the fat that's underneath that crumb. And in which case, meaning it would really be for both sides. The, his, his point is he had just mentioned only one side as you have to take off a certain crumb. So he says, and some people say you should take off the fat also. He really means the fat from both crumbs. But he's about to say that the tzad pnim, the, the long side, you don't have to take off. So, so sort of, if he's stuck in there like as a parenthetical comment. So maybe he just meant that the middle sheet is the second sheet, which is like just a few words as a parenthetical comment. as v'yesh machmirim to be chayshish rabbeis mimitz. But he didn't just mean from one side; he meant from both sides. Okay, I don't, I don't think that's the simple reading of the Ramah, but maybe that's an answer to the question. And or another possibility is that the the reason why the Ramah is machmir about the fat on the liver side instead of, and not on the fat on the lung side is because there are there are extra reasons to be machmir about that. And the two possible reasons to be extra machmir about that is that first of all um, is that we're going to see soon when we talk about the inside skirt that there's a shiloh whether a, a, something that's covered with fat is considered to be covered. If you remember, we spoke about um, that fat which is covered by meat is not can't be chelav. Uh, we learn al haq all the things that are on the top, the things that are covered can't be chelav. Now, Rav Lezmi Mitz holds that drasha does not apply to the diaphragm. He says specifically, it does not apply to the diaphragm. Okay, but if, if we didn't agree with that, it's a shiloh whether something that's covered by a crumb is considered to be covered or not covered. So we're going to see that when we talk about the inside skirt, in which case, the the maybe maybe the fat on the liver side is is, a, is more reason to be machmer because the covering doesn't count as opposed to the fat that's on the on the long side is for sure covered it's covered by by the meat by the skirt itself okay and another possibility is that the, we also saw that Teres Kainim has a special drasha to say that Chelav had the finest is mutter so Rabbi Lezmeimit says that doesn't apply to the to the fat that's on the on the diaphragm because that's brought on the mizbech. But it could be that the others will argue and say that the, the fat that's on the long side is for sure chayla of the finest. That's on the, on the long side. The fat that's on the liver side, maybe that's not going to be chayla of the finest. None of these, neither of these sheets are things that are spoken out by people like Rishonim or even the Chernim who speak out. So it's just conjecture of maybe why the Ramah would possibly be machmer, or the Ramah never meant to be, mach, never meant to be mach, more machmer about one, the fat on one side than the other side. Okay, but then the Ramah, back to the Ramah. So we said so far two sheets. We said the Ramah, first sheet there was, to be Menachar, the side that's on the, the of the crumb that's on the liver side. The second sheet was Rabbi Lezim to, to think about the fat, even fat that's underneath the crumb is also should be also, it's inherently also. And then he brings at the minigiz, the Ramah brings at the minigiz, that you take off the, the crumb on both sides of the of the skirt. Okay? Not not the fat. This third sheet, this is, don't worry about fat. It doesn't say anything about fat. There's only crumb in it. Why do you take them off? So the the one the chrome that's on the side that's on the liver side on the back side of the or, or the top side when you're doing it of the of the skirt is taking off because it touches the chilev um, for chilev hakerev and the the other side the side that's on the long side which is nowhere near chilev that the reason why you take that off 
is because it's too hard to tell the difference. Okay, the, the two sides of the skirt look identical to most people. So Menachem can tell the difference. One side is more uh, marbled, um, like they, they rid, rid, they call it, one side is like pasta, like noodles, it looks like. Um, the other side is more smooth. Uh, but for most people, you can't tell the difference between one side and the other. And therefore, um, you take off both sides because it's so hard to tell. They, they look the same. It's just a long strip of meat with, with a crumb on both sides. So they take off the crumb on the on the long side, not because you you really need to. There's no reason. It's not your chela, but you take it off because it, so you shouldn't make uh, mistakes. Um, and um, it, it, in that context, uh, Rabbi Heinemann said that, that only this makes sense to say you should take off two crumb because you're never sure. It's hard to tell which is which. That makes sense if you cut off a skirt like the way we do for beef, that you cut off, uh, you cut off the skirt, it, it becomes its own uh, independent piece of meat, and no one can tell which side is which. He says, but in veal, uh, they're smaller, and the, the, the butchering is, the style of butchering is to leave the uh, skirt attached to the ribs. It's such a small piece of meat that they leave the, 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 the meat, everything is so small, you leave the skirt attached, then it's easy to tell which side is which. Um, that's because just because of the angles, the the, the tarpish is at an angle, and it's easy to tell when you look at it. You could see which side of the ribs, it, which side it faces the inside of the ribs, which side faces the outside. It's much easier. M- maybe every diner in the restaurant can't tell, but it's pretty easy for people who've seen it before to know which side is which. And therefore, uh, if he said in that case, you wouldn't have to take off the crumb that's on the inside, on the long side. Okay. So the Ramah says that such a minute that, that you take off the crumb on both sides. Um, there's also along the edges of the skirt. Um, on the very edges, lengthwise, on the edges, there's a shiny layer. They, they call it a, a silvery white layer. They call it the marakesev. Um, they take that also, so <clears throat> it's connected to the crumb, so they take it off also. You know, again, the crumb itself is only also because of the chela, but they take it off because it's attached to the because attached to the crumb. Now, there's different minhagim about how to do this. Um, the veteran minhagim from the United States say that what the Ramah says, is what people always did in the United States and what was done in Europe before World War II, which was they took off the crumb from both sides and they did not take off the fat that was between <clears throat> that was between the crumb. So the, the crumb got ripped off, the fat that was underneath it stayed on, and the meat, of course, was motor. Um, but in Eretz Yisrael, they take off the fat like our brothers and minutes, they take off the fat. Um, and it's, in America, many have started to do that as well, um, to follow that and take off the, like the middle sheet, to take off the chel, the, the fat that's on the um, skirts as well. Okay, now, I mentioned that the the uh, diaphragm, the tarpish, has these, has aside from the outside skirts, has a thicker piece of muscle in the middle called the hanging tender. Um, it's, it's hanging because that sort of does. It hangs down from up high, like near the spine, down towards the center of the diaphragm. It's enclosed by the same um, chrome. So it has chrome on both sides, but this is this one, it, the shape of it is different, it's thicker, um, it's maybe an inch or more thick, and on the one end of it is a little more roundish, pointy-ish, and that side, that ends up going right into the chel of hakleus. The kidneys are up high in the back of the animal near the spine, and it goes up into the chel of hakleus, to the chel that's around, which is also medirisa, and then the lower end of it, which is more towards the center of the of the diaphragm, um, is forked. It's like It divides into two sections, and there's a little, Big chunk of fat in the middle of that, and running through that center is the is the vesha, the esophagus, uh, runs right through there. Um, so um, the in, in here, the the it's covered with the chrome also, and it has fat on on its surface as well. Aside from that fat, the chunk of fat between the two forks. Um, here, people are a little bit more mocked about the fat. Um, it does touch the chayla vaklayas for sure on, on one end, on the on the roundish pointy end. Um, so it's. Most people in, for the hanging tender take off both chrome, the chromo sides, like the Rama, they take off the fat also, and they take off the fat between the two forks, which is, now that fat is um, not near the chayla clays, that's on the wrong side, but they take that off also. But in the center of the of the hanging tender, running right down the middle, there's, there's a, like a thick uh, strip of fat um, that's embedded in the meat. It's not on the meat, it's embedded in the meat, and that you leave, that's allowed to stay on. That no one holds us, so you leave that on. Uh, so I'm just scrape it down just to make sure there isn't any of that like well, above this the level the plane of the way to meet this. Okay, so far we've spoken about the outside skirt. <clears throat> now we're going to move towards the other skirt, the inside skirt. For that, we're moving to the plate area of the of the, of the animal, and the plate area is the part that's below the ribs. Um, 
So the, the ribs is the, what we call the rib section is the seven ribs, the seven back ribs um, till through number 12. And underneath that thing is called the plate area. Okay, well, some call it the navel also, because it includes the navel. So the, the um, this area that we call the plate, um, the Ramos speaks about it, and the Ramos says like this. The Ramos says, B'chatzi behem is opening, all the chalav, he's in the Simmons Hawk. He's talking about all the chalav. He says those, those chalav, all the chalav are in the hind corner. None of them are in the front. Rock. Some of the chalav that's on the chalav haksalim, the, the chrom, the, remember the Gemara said the, 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 one of the chrom that are also is the kahli that's the, of the chalav. One of those chrom continues on to the, to, to the front. Uh, and in Nisha Brush had the finest Alex Psalm. It goes to, towards the finest, that, and that's this piece of meat over here. It goes here to the plate area. And you have to rip off that crumb, has to be taken off. It's one of the crumen that the Gemara says you can't take off because it's Yanyang and Chelev, it's Asim and it's, 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 it's connected to Chelev, and therefore it needs to be taken off. So that crumb, that the, it's, a, it's in the picture, it's, it's shown by this triangle, um, it's sort of a, and that crumb has to be pulled back. Now, when you pull off that crumb, you find out that underneath it, there are, um, <clears throat> you can see both skirts that we've been talking about. Higher up, so to speak, um, closer to the ribs, is the outside skirt. That's the tarpish. It's a, it's a piece of the tarpish, isn't it? Because the tarpish runs from the chaze, which is like the sixth, I believe that's at the end of the sixth or the seventh rib, on the bottom, and it goes up to like the up to the 13th ribs, so it runs like at an angle, running right across the across the ribs. So the, in, in this picture, you see part of the tarpish, part of the what we call the outside skirt, running across there. Um, and then there's a little piece, some fat, and underneath it is the inside skirt. Now, what we see here is the the inside skirt, which is really only part of the inside skirt, because the truth is that that piece of meat that we call the inside skirt for for in the front half of the animal, it may be 8, 10 inches long. But really, the whole thing is much longer. It's more like 24 inches long. And it runs, it, it goes from the front of the animal, out from the plate, what we call the plate area, into the back half of the animal. So in a non-kosher slaughter, um, that whole piece is taken off as one big piece and sold as the, as the inside skirt. That whole thing is one long strip. Um, and in fact, in some shechitas, they also want that to be one strip, and that's all this non-kosher. Um, they, they take off the whole piece, take, cut off the whole piece as one and sell as non-kosher. In a kosher shrita, we don't take anything past the 12th rib. So in, in, a, in a kosher shrita, if, if you were to cut the animal just by the 12th rib, you end up with a small piece in the front, which is called the, the inside skirt, they call that the rafala. That's a, we call it the, the kosher part, so to speak, the front part of it, we call it the rafala. I don't know if there's a name for the back here. Uh, but in, in in, in a non-kosher slaughterhouse, they would take the whole piece off, including the front part, and sell it as treif, as one big piece. In some kosher shritas, they do that also. They, they, they rip off the piece from the back and from the front together. So where they rip off the back part of it first, then they cut the animal in half, and then they pull off the front so they can keep it as one piece, which they sell as treif. They don't sell it on the kosher side. We don't take from the back half. But in a, in a regular, in most kosher shritas, they cut the animal, and then this piece, the rafala, is this inside skirt? It's not as fine to me as the other as the outside skirt, it seems. Um, but we it's sold, and that's called the rafal. So when again, so the the the, the krum haksal, when we rip off that, when we pull back the 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 krum that the says you for sure have to take off, you see now the insides. You see the inside skirt, and then attached to the bottom of it, the the, the inside skirt, running along the side, and the bottom, like along the, the full sort of like the lowest part of the animal. Um, is a thicker white membrane. It's called the chrom avalovum, um, a descriptive name. It's, it's the, the thick white membrane, um, and that that is attached to the bottom. Okay, now, um, if you if you took if you removed the rafala, that's the inside skirt, and the chrom avalovum, if you took those two out, underneath it there's another layer of fat, and underneath that layer that Next layer of fat is another piece of meat, which is called that's called the plate meat, or in, in Yiddish we call it the shvundra, okay, and that's the meat that is made into pastrami. Um, but that so that so if again we if we have to take off the chrome the, the top chrome, then we and then we took off the inside skirt 
and the Kroma of Alavon, we would see a layer of fat. If we took off that layer of fat, we would see the Pastram, we meet the, the Shvundra, which is underneath that at, at, the, at the lowest level. So the question is, do we need to take off the, does the chrome of lovin have to be taken off? Does that have is that fat which is also does that have to be removed? And what about the the layer of fat um, that's between the the rifala and the shvunjo, the between the chrome of lovin and the shvunjo? What about that layer of fat that's between that 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 separates between the shvunjo, which is the pastrana, it's the lowest layer. I mean, the, the sort of the closest to the outside of the animal, and the, the this top layer. Does that have to be taken on also? So that's what like. some people say that 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 uh, fat that that those the chroma of love and the fat that's underneath it are considered to be covered. They have a chipuy bus that are covered by meat, but covered. Why? Because they have the the chrome on the top of them. Um, have the the, the the top layer, the the, the chrome shach shach solemn. That that layer on the top is considered a covering, and therefore they don't have to be removed because it's not alak solemn. It's not on the outside. It's on. It's deeper in. Things that are deeper in don't have to be taken out. Uh, and others and others say that no, that doesn't count. That's not good enough to be counted as a covering, and therefore the, you are more to take it off. And those two days are brought in the Ramal, who says, um, some people say you have to also take off the meat, uh, take separate the meat, the name, and take off the fat that's between them, um, because the fat that's between the the Rafala and the sh- between them, sorry, the fat that's the chrome of Lovon and the fat that's underneath it have to be taken off because they're not covered. The meaning is that we allow it, that we don't consider, we consider the chrome of Lovon and the fat that's underneath it to be covered and they don't need to be, we don't need to take them off, we don't need to remove them because they're not usher. Okay, so, um, so the, the how, how does the, so, so there are different. Um, different minhagim about that. Um, that's what Rama says. Uh, that, you're, that you're allowed to leave, you're allowed to some the, the minigan Ashkenaz is leave it off. The minigan Eretz is not to take. It was not the minigan, So that was what they did in America. That's what they used to do in America. Um, but the in Eretz Yisrael they did not do that. If, if, if you remember, we mentioned about in, in Tashlam Amitaz and for the years afterwards, people came and complained about what happened in America. This is one of the things that they argued about. Um, that they saw that in America they weren't taking that off. In more recent years, people have started following the Israeli practice a certain amount, uh, but they didn't use to take that off. Um, that was not the minute to take that off in America or in Europe before World War II. And that's all they did. Okay, so now, but now, what about the what about the fat that's underneath the rafala? Okay, remember the rafala and the kruma to, are, are together are above a layer of fat, and underneath that layer of fat is the shvundra, is the pastrami. So what about so the part the chroma of and the fat that's underneath the chroma of lovon that's what the machlokes the Ramah has these two days where they have to take them off. But what about the part of the fat that's underneath the rafala between the rafala the inside skirt and the shvundra? What about the fat over there? That everyone agrees that's considered to have a chipui baser because the inside skirt is covering it. <clears throat> the rafala is covering that fat. It's, everyone agrees that that fat does not have to be taken off. It can't possibly be chayav that, that that fat. So it does have to be taken off. Okay, so that's really nice. How does the monocular supposed to know which, how did the monocular know which fat was the part that was covered by the, the rafala and which part was covered by the chromav lovon? The, the rafala part he wants to leave. The part that's underneath the rafala he wants to leave. The part that's on the chromav lovon he wants to take off. How does he know which is which? So it so happens that there's a, there's a, 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 a blood vessel that runs there. This is the blood vessel that we took off from the chaza, the the, the chaza. We, we spoke about in the past. We take off this, there's a long chut that runs down from the neck, from the base of shechita, it runs down and runs along the, the brisket, uh, <coughs> the chaza, runs along the brisket on the bottom of the animal, and then it runs, all, it runs, continues into the plate meat, into the right of the meat we're speaking about, and it runs right through, right across um, the shvunch, right across the pastrami, but it runs across at, a, at just about the same place where the chrome of lovon starts, um, at the separation between the the, sh, the rafala and the chrome of lovon, it runs just about in that spot. So after you've peeled away the the rafala, you could still see which fat was underneath the rafala, which one was not, by by using this line as a sort of like a line of demarcation to see wherever that that chut was. So the chut gets t- gets taken out because of the dam showing because it has blood in it, but that but it also serves as a marker that the dam that the, the Fat that's underneath it, I mean, from it and down towards the bottom of the animal, 
is the part that was underneath the krum avalavam. If you hold, you have to take that out. You take that fat off. But the fat that's between the chut and above, and closer to the spine of the animal, the part that's above, uh, which is underneath the rafala, that does not have to be taken out um, because that had a chibu bus that was covered over and is not considered to chel. Okay, now, so we're, we're finished with, with our inside skirt. I'm going to just mention that this plate area has some other shadows with it that we're not going to speak about. Um, one of them I mentioned, of course, you have to take off the, this, the chut because of a dam. It's a chut dam has to be taken off. Okay. Um, second is there are, there's questions about whether this, as if you remember in the pictures, there's, there's, there's fat between the inside skirt and the outside skirt. There's fat so, so like horizontally between them. There's questions about whether that has to be taken out. Um, and also is that the this area, the plate area, has the extensions of the ribs. The ribs are bones, but when they get to the plate area, they turn into um, cartilages, um, a soft, like a softer bone. And they, when they hit the plate area, they, they then turn like sort of a 90 degree turn and start facing towards the front of the head of the animal. They sort of make a bend and go forward. Um, and so one thing is, uh, does do you need to take off the fat, no, I'm sorry, the, the nerves that run along them? Remember, in the 10th, 11th, and 12th nerves, 10th, 11th, and 12th ribs, we take off the, the nerves that run alongside them. Um, as a, we consider the chut and the kafli, do we have to take off the part at, in the extension in the, in the plate area? Do they take get taken off also? And uh, what about the, the 13th rib? The 13th rib also makes a turn like that and it heads towards the front. So we are meaning to take off the whole 13th rib. What about the, the cartilage of that 13th rib? Does that also have to be taken off? Again, there's been different hukum about that, whether these do or don't have to be removed.